Namaskar, good morning and welcome to the class. Uh, as you understand, the dance has played, always played through the history, a pivotal role in keeping our traditions, cultures alive. Not only that, it has a thread running which has the common integrity of the whole nations, though apparently the forms look different. So, as part of the national movement, when the arts help us to build our own identity as a nation, the splendid isolation that many of the forms had experience till then is to be seen. Some of the early institutions like the Gandharva Mahavidyalaya Samstha focused on the pursuit of a single arts, music in the case and much as the gharanas of music did and also introduced later dance. There were a few exceptions to the argument of isolation as in the case the sudden arrival of Bharatanatyam in Vadodara as part of Tanjore princess Chimnabai's dowry when she married the Maharaja of Baroda Sayajirav Gaikwad III in 1883. But the same coming up of Baroda, dance to Baroda prompted the Sayajirav Gaikwad who was a great votary of females education and arts to start a Sangeet Shala and later which developed in the university the College of Indian Classical Music Dance and Drama in 1949 as part of the MS University, the first university to introduce Kathak, Bharatanatyam, sitar, violin, vocal, theatre, all as an institution, as an art education. And there were however some other cultural institutions that were also pushing the artistic renaissance. Tagore's Vishwabharti at Shantiniketan, built in 1921 out of the purse that he received as part of the Nobel Prize. Vishwabharti was built as a reaction of the western education that Tagore encountered when he was studying in England. Tagore offered an alternative model in the vision and life of Shantiniketan, a close relationship with nature and the arts was its mainstay. Tagore was a painter, a poet, a musician when he came to dance. It was in a way his last engagement with an artistic discipline. Thus, he had a mature, open-minded and sagacious approach to it. He had already written extensively on it, Chetrangada, Natir Puja and such. By the time he began practice of dance, he recognized that it was very creative way of getting women involved in a public role. Thus, for him the spirit was more important than the rules and regulations of any style as the spirit freed with rules and regulations shackle. That is why the Vishwabharti dancing style does not clearly prescribe to any form accounting for why the dance of Shantiniketan has a free flowing feel to it and now it is getting recognized as Ravindranritya. So you can see that in early 1900 two great advocatories of 
women's education and arts sayajira gaikwad and ravindranath tagore helped build a uh, institutions which promoted supported arts and arts education other institutions that were affecting a renaissance in the arts were kerala kala mandalam built in 1930 with the poet vallathol and mannakulam mukund raja as the co-founders and rukmini devi's kalakshetra built in 1936 that were encouraging the arts to come close in a creatively salubrious environment for instance in 1940 kathakali asan t k chandu panikar joined kalakshetra and taught many including v p dhananjayan since then in the ballets produced by kalakshetra one of the flavors is kathakali Similarly in Shantiniketan it was Manipuri dance that found a new location left an indelible mark on the dance cultures associated with Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore Interestingly in the initial years the Manipuri teachers of Shantiniketan came via the Tripura route and not directly from Manipur Apart from Manipuri Shantiniketan hosted Kathakali and mohiniattam from kerala as a result of his overseas travels tagore was also acquainted with kandyan javanese and balinese dances elements of which he was able to incorporate in the shantiniketan dancing style the silonese dance was formally taught at shantiniketan after traveling the world and having tasted international fame with his uday shankar troupe of hindu dancers that did a hard to pinpoint to any one known dance style it was in 1938 that he finally made india as his base and established the uday shankar india cultural center at the himalayan village of simtola 3 kilometers from almora in what is now known as uttarakhand here he invited shankar and nambundri for kathakali kandapa pillai for bharatanatyam amobi singh for manipuri and alauddin khan his brother's guru known for his catholic approach to teaching for music a large ensemble of performers were drawn to this selvian setting where the best masters came together to create poss- possibly india's first multi style training center the center had become and some commonalities with tagore's vishwa bharati in the closeness to nature and a non restrictive creative environment the uday shankar center however closed after 4 years in 1942 due to a, me- a problem and paucity of funds but its place in history cannot be ignored for it was the first time that different dance forms were living and working so close together the work that thus emerged was described as renaissance of sorts and helped free the indian cultural mind to some extent it would appear that it was for churning that was happening at the uday shankar center at simtola that these lines were written where knowledge is free where the world has not been broken into fragments by narrow domestic walls where words come out from the depth of truth where tireless striving stretches its arm towards perfection where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit where the mind is led forward by the into the ever widening thought and action this is as you all should be knowing the poem the famous poem of rabindranath tagore titled where the mind is without fear so liberating was the environment in simtola 
that despite the heartbreak of having to leave it in 1948, Uday Shankar made his magnum opus film Kalpana at Chennai's Jamini studio using a dance language that was unique and which may be described as reflective of India as it captured the diversity of many dance forms in a creative manner. Even as the new nation was being created, this creative language of dance that was he was using seemed reflective of the process. Inspired by the idea of a multi-art center, some of the centers that came up in the post-independent India took on multiple arts profile and became associated with the revival of those arts that were seeing poorer days or were even languishing. Though they picked up such arts in an opportunistic manner in which the sense when they were provided grants or when a practitioner was available to lead the department, their work soon bore the impression of the many streams of dance. Many of these centers were located in Delhi that was fast becoming a cultural capital of the country. The case of Sri Ram Bharatiya Kendra is an example. Set up originally in 1947 as Jhankar, it became a formal school in 1952. Under the gui uh, guidance of Sumitra Charatnam, it attracted the finest talent. Amongst those who came and who got associated with the Kendra in the initial years were Pandit Shambhu Maharaj and Pandit Birju Maharaj Fukatak, who created some magnificent work to the music of Dagar Brothers, who were also here. Soon the Kendra was to add on Kathakali and Mayurbhan Chau sections. The Kendra takes on the credit for uplifting Kathak when it was going through a bad phase before the Kathak Kendra was established by the government of India. It was able to give the Mayurbhanj Chau a fresh lease of life and with these diverse inputs ended up creating a series of dance dramas or ballets that showcased them. The first such major experiment that the Kendra created was Ramlila, that is now an institution as it gets performed annually. The first production took place in 1957. The script was written by Hindi poet Ramdhari Singh Dinkar with lights designed by Tapas Sen and Inder Razdan. Uday Shankar's colleague, dancer Narendra Sharma, was a principal dancer along with his wife Jayanti Sharma. None other than the Prime Minister of India <coughs> inaugurated it. Subsequent to the success of Ram Leela, SBKK created a whole range of memorable ballets using the language of Mayur Bhanchau in a creative manner. Soon the Ram Leela too began to bear the impress of the various departments of dance styles that the Kendra opened. Dance and energy and kinetics are contagious after all. In the early years of nation, the arts, particularly dance, was used as a tool for diplomacy. Around the same time before visiting dignitaries at Rashtrapati Bhavan, a tradition began of showcasing the arts of India, particularly the classical arts of India. Thus, 10 to 15 minutes piece were presented by different artists. Some of the artists themselves performed more than one dance in an evening as they had taken training for few items in many styles. Shanta Rao, Indrani Rehman, Vaijanti Malabali, Yamini Krishnamurti are all coming to mind. These dancers would perform at least two if not more styles in every performance. Indrani would dance Bharatanatyam for the first time and then Odyssey for the second. Shantara would do Kathakali and then Mohiniyattam. Yamini Krishna learned Bharatanatyam, Odissi and Kuchipudi. These pioneers of dance did yeoman service to popularize the many dance forms of India when a very few modern educated women were dancing publicly. Slowly, the critical mass of dancers, dance forms and dance repertoire 
grew enough to create a robust dance scene in India that was aware of the many dance forms that existed and that had begun valorizing dance in a big change from the days that saw it suffering a stigma. The annual Republic Day Parade showcases India's defense capabilities and cultural and social heritage. This is a rare case of Ministry of Defense managed endeavor which includes so much culture, albeit all moving at the pace of military boots and to military precision. With dancing troops coming from different states, from NCC battalions and from local schools, with fascinating imaginative state floats often carrying the dancers as signifiers of the culture and the accompanying Republic Day folk dance festival with almost a thousand dancers each evening herded in expertly by the baton of a show choreographer. One encounters the union of India. For years, this event has been sensitized Indians to the diversity of India's cultural scope. However, the parade has played an intuitive and transformative role in the dances that it carries along. Firstly, by decontextualizing them and then by altering the choreographic patterns of the dances into predominantly straight line patterns as the columns and rows of dancers, all of whom wear shoes, move in step with the soldiers and members of the police and paramilitary forces. You can see the Garba dancers who dance in circles going in lines and the form has the vibrancy to carry but the circle has its own significance. Still, the sheer opulence of the colors, costumes, dance movements, songs and the joy that the dancers and dances all lined up one after another bring makes our chest swell up with pride. This is truly unity in diversity in play. With the Asian Games of 1982, India developed a culture of presenting herself as ground spectacle built around almost industry size troops of dancers. The first such experiment was contained in the opening ceremony of the Asian Games. Classical dance was dismissed immediately as unsuitable. Instead, 7,000 folk dancers for whom an entire township with its own postmodern office and police stations was set up, had to grip the attention of 75,000 people in a football field 10,000 square meter. The smaller segments from each state were choreographed separately, each one distinct in its formation, music and concept. None other than Birju Maharaj choreographed with the Pradesh's folk dance around the theme of Holi. Like a patchwork quilt, the whole was woven from the paths into a seamless spectacle in Delhi by Narendra Sharma, who had been trained in choreography at the Uday Shankar Center at Almora and then at Russia, a country known for the ease with which it conceives and hosts extravaganzas. Interestingly, it needed the might of the army to put into place and make it mo move smoothly without egos coming into the way and precisely so that there was no embarrassing gaps on field as the eyes of the world were focused on India. By the time of the Commonwealth Games 2010, the doubt that classical dance could not be made the grade for such a spectacle had long gone and so a segment called the Tree of Knowledge incorporated classical dance. Kathak Guru Barju Maharaj, Manipuru Gurus Rajkumar Singh Jit Singh and his wife Charu Sija Singh, Bharatnatyam Guru Saroja Vaidyanathan, Odissi Guru 
सोनल मान सिंह मोहिनी अट्टम गुरु भारती शिवाजी कूचिपुड़ी गुरु राजा एंड राधा रेड्डी यूज एज मेन एज फोर हंड्रेड एंड एटी डांसर्स टू ब्रिंग अलाइव इंडियाज गुरु शिष्य परंपरा ऑन स्टेज थ्रू क्लासिकल डांस रिसाइटल्स विच ऑल्सो डिपिक्टेड द फोर डिफरेंट सीजन्स ऑफ इंडिया द आइडिया वॉज फर्दर रे इन्फोर्स्ड बाय द यूज ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एज द एरोस्टेट द लार्जेस्ट एवर हीलियम बलून बिल्ट फॉर सच एन इवेंट फॉर्म द लीव्स ऑफ द बोधी ट्री वाइल लार्ज ट्राइब्स एलिवेटेड फ्रॉम द ग्राउंड मेड ऑफ सिल्क एंड बैम्बू फाइबर फॉर्म द ट्री ट्रंक अ स्ट्रेंज फ्यूजन ऑफ मल्टीपल डांसिस केम टू द फॉर एज इंडिया बिकेम एम आई सी ई डेस्टिनेशन एम आई सी ई स्टैंड फॉर मीटिंग्स इंसेंटिव कॉन्फ्रेंसिस एंड इवेंट्स दिस आस्पेक्ट ऑफ ब्रिंगिंग मैनी क्लासिकल डांसिस ऑन द सेम स्टेज विद द गोल ऑफ ड्रॉइंग आई बॉल्स एंड अ वाव रिएक्शन इज द वर्क ऑफ द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ टूरिज्म एंड इट्स इनक्रेडिबल इंडिया कैंपेन what could be more incredible images of gorgeous splendors of india than a host of bejeweled and bedecked dancers representing among them the eight classical dance styles of india configuring in elegant patterns and status poses on one such shared stage possibly the original inspiration came from the mile sur mera tumhara a multilingual song video promoting national integration by featuring the most important india's musicians it was telecast for the first time on the Indi- independence day 15th august 5, 1988 as soon as the telecast of the prime minister's speech from the red fort concluded it was available only on doordarshan and had a large impact as doordarshan was then the only channel available in india it quickly captivated india gaining and maintaining near anthem national anthem status in the same way in the mark of the 50th year of independence of india in 1997 ar rahman came out with an album called vande matram which had the title song sung by him it is the largest selling indian non film album to date it had had a profoundly positive and unifying impact on the nationalistic and patriotic mood of the country the videos that bharat bala productions made on them featured maestros like guru kelu charan mahapatra and young dancers like kathak dancer the veronique azan who is a french along with folk dancers this Vignettes were telecast repeatedly on TV and had a powerful impact. They came across as continuing ripple of the music video, achieving much and the same end by kindling a feeling of patriotism and nationalism. One of the earliest examples of this kind of spectacular coming together on stage is the small work called Tridhara. that originally had veronik azan doing kathak rama vaidyanathan doing bharatanatyam and kavita dwive be doing odissi the three dancers choreographed it together three dhara turned out to be enduring despite many changes in dancers over the last 25 years today only one kavita still remains from the original trio this way of showing showing the splendid richness of indian dance traditions become such a hit that many large gra- grander and glorious variants of it are in existence choreographed by different dancers around different themes but so to the theme and purpose that of creating a spectacle unique to india example of such works include vande matram first choreographed in 2008 by pratibha prahlad which opened the festival of india in manila earlier this year and included eight classical dance styles as well as the martial arts of chau another such work is charishnu choreographed by leela samson in 2008 the ministry of tourism on the occasion of the opening of this office in china charishnu included ensemble drawn from five classical dances of india the martial art of thangta and array of drummers 
taking the total number 260 performers. For any such effort, it becomes important to know each other forms, to know many forms and to be respectful to all. Saptakam was recently choreographed by the doyen of Kathak and choreography Kumudin Nilakya for the Sangeet Natak Academy's group of seven dance forms that went to China in 2014 on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of Manchushil, which coincided with the year-long glimpses of India Harvest, a cultural extravaganza organized by the Embassy of India to mark 214 as the year of India-China friendly exchange. Thus, the Ministry of Tourism and the Ministry of External Affairs gave a small and different agenda to dance. This new agenda ascribes to dance is an example of how inter-ministry collaborations work. One of the finest examples of how the soft power of the dance and arts was used in a hard-nosed way to push for an economic benefit was contained in the Make in India initiative of Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi. Launched la in last couple, couple of months back in Germany in presence of Mr. Modi and Ms. Merkel. The incredibly colorful spectacle of dance and exuberance which opened the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's speech at Hanover Messe, the world's biggest industrial fair, was created by dancer and choreographer Mayuri Upadhyay and her sister Madhuri Upadhyay. Mayuri, who is trained in Bharatanatyam, Kathak, Odyssey, Kalari Payatu, folk and modern dance, is the principal choreographer of the dance company Nritya Rutya Dance Collective and has also choreographed for the Kannada film industry. He has thus made her Bollywood debut. She is also a judge on the Dancing with Stars to a reality dance show. Under her baton, 94 dancers got to perform together a suit of 14 different acts along with multimedia inputs, all worked out within a period of 30 days. Initial work was done independently by each group with virtual supervision, making best use of modern technology. The choreography interpreted the theme of the Prime Minister, Make in India. It encompassed the spirit of young, progressive India and simultaneously brought out the heritage of India through a contemporary field. It incorporated a diverse range of tangible, intangible and live elements of the culture of this country. It began with yoga to soothing music, introduced eight classical dance forms, puppetry, martial arts and link them to the form of Rangoli designs. Even the ritualistic practice of the Ganga Arti at the banks of Badaras with the chanting of mantra was included as an example of living culture. This spectacular optic had a breath stopping moment with the appearance of 3D tiger depicting the technological advancement of the country and bringing in a sense of grandeur. This is, I mean, when you see the opening of major events like the Asian Games and so on and so forth, the power of dance, the cultural unity that dance styles project is brought out so easily and so beautifully by the choreographers. Thank you.